Hello, Josh. Oh, hi. Funny running into you here. I thought I just saw you on that Facebook live stream. Ooh, the one that we recorded and we're just going to put up unedited as an episode? Yes, unedited, exposed, and raw. So if this sounds a little different, that's why. That's it. Enjoy the episode. Oh, of t- Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen is what we watched. I think it took like 15 minutes for us to say the title. So yeah. here you are. Together, 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 together. We're part in this together. Once we know that we are, we're our stars and we see that we're part in this together. And it shows when we stand hand in hand, make our dreams come true. Good vibes. Good good vibes? Good vibes. Good vibes. Oh, vibes. Okay. Well, um, what are we doing here? Wait. Okay. Um, We're recording an episode for Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Why? Because we never recorded the... the, What was the McFly one? Just Just My my Luck. luck, Which was my choice, but... You know. I'm. <laughs> we went and saw Trixie Mattel on the night we were supposed to record, and then the world ended, and then we never got around to it. And it's then been a, it's been a it's been a journey. And then, and then I picked this one because it's legally available on Disney Plus. Which why isn't Just My Luck on there? Why? I don't know where Just My Luck is. It's gone. It's hard to find. I feel like there was something. I mean, I shouldn't be saying this on the live video since it might be completely false, but. I think something bad happened to McFly. Oh. Like, I think there was some drama or something. I haven't heard of where they are. I feel like I heard something a few years ago and it wasn't positive. But I don't know if it was, like, scandal big or just, like... Also, Chris Pine is in Just My Luck. And I feel like he was like, can we not, like, promote that movie in anywhere? Thanks. It's kind of like how Drake was in Degrassi. And that's my theory as to why it's really hard to find it. Like, it's not streaming anywhere. I think he bought it all. He just bought the school. Well, today, uh, hello. Why you? Okay, welcome to Pot in This Together, the podcast where we find out if beloved movies stink, swim. (laughs) Oh, that's it. Stink or swim? There's nothing else. That's it. What was the other one? (laughs) I'm Josh. (laughs) I'm Lori. Um, and today we're watching Confess- Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I was just talking 2004? Right- yeah, so. same year as Mean Girls. For real? I think so. I'm just going to keep spouting off facts that I'm not going to check this <laughs> okay. entire time. Um, but yeah, I was just talking to Brandon. I remember when we came up with the stink or swim thing, we were all really proud of it. But I think we were just exhausted. And we're like, that's the best. And then it's just every time we've actually tried to say it it's not good (laughs) i I just expect something else to be there stink or swim or float (laughs) just like i remember at one point i'm like well we should do like an aquatic themed month (laughs) so it makes you really like your themes that's the that's what we're doing i know we're in a low hand theme if no one got that with just I my don't know how they could have gotten that. Mean Girls and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Yes. This movie and that... is like underrated. It's quiet. No one mentions this movie. Yeah. Which is wrong because it might be better than, better than Mean Girls. Have you seen this before? I did, but not since it came out. And I think there was like 30 Lindsay Lohan movies movies released in the same month this year like that year 2004 that i i liked it a whole lot but then they i had to move on to the next yes one. uh this was like a beloved favorite of my sisters so this is one i i kind of knew every word to i don't even know why we liked it like we would just all watch it and put it on but it was like i don't know it was definitely there i like it yeah i can see why you enjoyed it can you tell me what this movie is about? Yes. A teenage girl is convinced that her home city revolves around her until her family packs up and moves to the suburbs where she finds herself competing for attention. That's 
one of the worst an imdb one there yeah that's not good what would your your um description like give me your your bio line of this movie you want you want my bio line yeah confessions of a teenage drama queen aka confessions of a teenager who is a drama queen that would be your imdb summary yeah that's what it is i that's why this movie is this movie is because it is just a teenager who is a drama queen and how she feels I'd say a pretentious teenager with an unhealthy obsession toward a rock star fights the mean girl at her new school who might not actually be that mean. She was kind of mean. I mean, she was, but like... Okay, fine. Look, she has issues. (laughs) (laughs) But that's how all the greats start. It's true. Also... I should say this because obviously if anybody's watching on Facebook right now, well, like, are there comments? Oh, no. Sammy said hello. Oh, hi. And then, but uh, the goal is to just put this audio unedited yeah. uncut onto our podcast stream tomorrow. Also, so. Sammy, I have your Boy Meets World DVDs. I oh tried my to God. get them to you before <laughs> the world ended, but it didn't happen. I'm so sorry. I forgot I, I passed that burden on to you. Um, <laughs> good, good use of our like unedited podcast episode. You're welcome. Um, Lindsay Lohan is Mary, but that's too boring of a name. So she wants to be called Lola. Did you know that that's what Brandon named his dog Lola after? For real? Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know if Brandon <laughs> has dogs. So, I mean, I knew, I know he has dogs. I follow it on Instagram. It's a good time. Yeah. But yeah, Lola the dog is named after Lola, which is actually Mary, which is actually Lindsay. Uh, yeah. I think this is peak Lohan. This movie? Or that yeah. fact? Okay. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like she was, like, fresh and fun. Like, it seemed like a... Like, no pressure, fun time. Yeah. She was on a roll... And this movie, she obviously like had fun doing this. And there's a scene at the beginning where she's in the back of the car and her hair was like so cute and she looked just really happy. I, I don't It was like just good vibes. I was like, oh, this is fun. This is cute. Yeah, I'll say it's a bunch of different vibe. We already recorded the episode for I Knew Who Killed Me. Spoilers, it's coming up. And like, it felt good to see her happy here after having watched <laughs> that so recently. Because the vibe of that movie is not great. Okay, I was looking up stuff for Two Truths and a Goof right quick right now. And this is only a 4.6 out of a 10 on IMDb. Like, what did people expect when they watched they got this? really low ratings. And I think <clears throat> I un- it's okay. I don't think it has to get good ratings. I think that, like, for what it is, it, I mean, we'll get into ratings later. But, like, I feel like this might be the casualty of... Oh. Like, in that frame of time, I feel like it was really cool to, like, it's always kind of cool, but it was extra cool right then to dislike things that, like, girls specifically liked, like Twilight and Bieber and Lindsay yeah, Lohan stuff. Yeah, people were definitely into a hating phase. Yeah. That was before the pandemic, whenever, <laughs> never mind, I can't joke about it yet, too soon. <laughs> that was definitely that was a post-9-11 <laughs> time oh god we're gonna have to like dive into like post-pandemic stuff on the podcast we are i'm so excited (laughs) never mind too soon oh Um, (laughs) Oh, boy look Lindsay or lola is moving out of new york she loves new york she's a new york girl my accent is as good as her was hers was so you can't even judge she's in a movie and they're moving to New Jersey. And then there's this scene where she's like out of the limo and her mom's like, oh, fine, stay in New York. And she like does a flip off of a tree. And that's when and you're she's like, like, I get to stay in New York all by myself. Yay, yay. That's when you're like, what the hell is this movie? Yeah. Right? I was excited. Yeah. Well, and okay. her costume was so cute for that part. It was really cute, but it the was effects, like a very. What? What were you expecting for them? She did a flip off of a tree 
and then shook her hands going hooray hooray and then it turned into a pop-up book house that she was moving back and forth I really it was liked, a lot i really liked the house visual because she was like i'm from new york the center of the universe my Look, name is carrie bradshaw I, are my ap- I appreciate how much <laughs> they tried with the visuals i don't think they like exactly hit the right tone that that everyone was expecting i disagree i feel like this was like in her head like her story so it was more of like those visuals were meant to be like how dramatic she saw herself yeah but like the artistic styling of those themselves she did not have good taste so it was fitting are you defending the weird back off of a tree and the little house with the puppeting was cute that's cute i but like other things in this movie are not cute like the bad things (laughs) Yes. Her dressed up as Marilyn Monroe. That was weird, weird foreshadowing. It was weird. Yeah. Because, like, you, you know. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. She, she was in the magazine. Yeah. Um, that, wow. Okay, this movie. <laughs> New Jersey sucks, though, right? <laughs> Is I, that what they're trying to tell us? I think New so. Jersey just gets dunked on real yeah. hard in this. But, like, would this have been around jersey shore time or was that later i i I think jersey's just always been the bad place (laughs) the bad place (laughs) fair sorry andoni i think that's where he lives i think so too Jersey. see nailed it um okay we're gonna stop that now yeah we can't edit it out (laughs) it's too late (laughs) she meets like this new girl ella or not new she meets a friend at school named Ella and they both love the Sid Arthur band and they had like those cool pins which like if you saw someone at high school with the same band you were like fallout boy yeah oh you love the indie music stylings of fallout boy (laughs) they're not on pop radio or anything (laughs) what were your three like bands when you were 15 like if somebody was wearing like the t-shirt with all three of the bands on it you'd be like we're the same person okay People are going to judge, but (laughs) Metro Station. Isn't that Miley Cyrus's brother's band? Okay. Um, Fall Out Boy. And then maybe like... You were cooler than me then, because I didn't like them until maybe like... I'm thinking like freshman year, I guess. I didn't get into them until like sophomore year. Ooh, freshman year is more like (laughs) yellow card... Huba Stank and a cold play. Why did everybody start not liking cold play? I honestly don't know. Like, I don't love them by any means, but I don't understand how they got put on the Nickelback level. Uh, right? Some people like vehemently hate them, but they're geniuses and they make millions of dollars and tour the world yeah. and just write songs that are acceptable. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I think mine would have been I think this would have been when I was kind of like leaving simple plan zone like at age 15 in middle school that was like my shit and then like Jason Mraz oh yeah and then I don't know I feel like that was like a weird like in between phase because I went yeah. from like pop punk to like bright eyes and other sad music brand new and death cab and oh, it was like yeah. kind of a weird like in between yes that time for me was like when i discovered actual music that i liked versus just like this is acceptable yes thank you kfrx top 40 oh because I'm 2.7 well because like i remember a very distinct like my playlist would basically be whatever is playing on kfrx at the summer at the pool and then this would be like when I stopped going to the pool or whatever. And so like I had to find my own LimeWire, <laughs> MySpace bands. Dang. If you only kept going to that pool, think of who you could have been. Oh, God. I'd be like very into Ariana Grande. <gasps> Probably. I think oh. she's like the big one, right? Because basically I'd just still be listening to like Top 40, which is fine. Yeah. But that's that would be a whole different like trajectory. It really would. The chlorine just does something to your brain. <laughs> 
the sun just like and then when they do the hourly like everybody out of the pool and so we can check why did they do that was it to make sure nobody had died that was my always my impression uh, always <laughs> that they like yes. to make sure there's no like <laughs> i mean that's a pretty good reason to make sure to but, like, get everyone out of the pool is that what it's actually for and to make sure no one pooped <laughs> two like worse things dead body interred <laughs> yeah and, like, to give, like, the people who are watching, like, a chance to, like, rotate or something. Okay. No, I'm not, yeah. I don't know. It seems Being like a lifeguard should... was so far away from, like, who I was. <laughs> In what, what, what do you mean? Like, going outside. <laughs> going outside. <laughs> yeah, just imagine, the, like, all that responsibility. Like, if you right? mess up at McDonald's, somebody doesn't get fries. They're Did pissed you off. Did you really want to be the dude sitting on the tower going, hey, a stop. A little. Did stop. you ever get in trouble? Yeah, for the dumbest things. Like, no touching their shoulder. And you'd be like, no touching. We're, we're at a swimming pool. Uh, yeah. yeah. I splashed people and got in trouble. Good. Uh, so Lola has to go to Jersey. She meets Ella, her new best friend. I love how, because I feel like that's realistic. Where like, if you're in a new zone and there's like somebody else who you can be like, you also seem uncomfortable. We're best friends now, fellow teen. It made so much sense, and I love how I felt like there always was that duo of someone who was like more uptight, but they secretly wanted to be more indie or whatever emo, and like the full out emo person. Like they always came in that little pair. Yeah, because it'd be like too much to have the same especially i think when you're a teenager everything's kind of performative oh yeah as lohan illustrates here with her drama but yeah Yeah. there's a lot of blazers in this movie there's (laughs) the outfits are real it makes me feel better about the blazer that i wore for much of my junior year (laughs) are you dabbing you need to raise your other hand I <clears throat> just had a moment of silence <laughs> for your blazer. I just like, I see pictures. I'm like, wow, I don't see other, like what? Okay. Mostly YouTubers when they're like showing throwback pictures and stuff of them when they were teens. I'm like, they look so cool. And like those clothes are actually kind of like classic for the most part. Like some of them like age decently well, or you can be like, oh, it makes oh, sense. Sure. You would have worn that. But when I think of what I wore, like my pinstripe fedora and that stuff i'm like oh god where was that coming from but then i see stuff like this i'm like no it was like a thing it was just like this weird subculture it doesn't mean that i was like cool or anything but like yeah the, it was it was a style that you it were existed yeah. Yeah. i was just trying to dress like lucas grabiel from high school musical <laughs> well my vibe it worked <clears throat> um i like the name sid arthur for a band though it is really good. Like I would listen to Sid Arthur. <clears throat> yeah. If they had a Spotify. Back in the day. Oh, or yeah. now. But uh, their look wise, it was very like all American rejects. It's what their the vibe they it, were giving off. Where it was yes. like teeny boppers listened to it, but like you could tell they were like actually maybe like for real rock star vibe. Right. It was a really good fake band. Yeah. And Stu Wolf as like the frontman. Mm-hmm. So I mean legit. Yeah. That's all I got to say on that. Would you have gone for the blonde guy or the main guy? We never really see the blonde, the drummer that Ella likes. Uh, except for when he like, she, like he, she tries to be like, I love you. And he's like, I can't deal with this. And it just made me think of like every story ever that Trixie Mattel has told about like people bringing their teens back like behind venues after so and she's like there's vip tickets you did not buy it please leave right <laughs> it's like it seems rude but also it makes a lot of sense like yeah not being rude just not the right you gotta set place. boundaries and if there's like a 15 year old yelling that she loves you yeah you probably don't need to be in that situation <laughs> also true yes i don't um, know um I'm looking uh, over at my... I have a dual monitor. I'm not like... Oh, fancy. I just like staring wistfully out the window or something. <laughs> uh, anything but uh, this. I mean, truly, but... um, Lola ends up making up this story about how her mom and dad met. And she like gives this whole elaborate 
thing, how they fell in love and they like went and camped in the desert. And then one day dad was like buying flowers for when my twin sisters were born. And then he died in a motorcycle accident. As an adult, I'm like, this girl is, her dad isn't around as much as she wants. So she's killing him off because it's easier than coping. As a kid, I was like, oh no, it's so sad. Her dad is dead and he was such a good dad. It makes so much more sense now when you're older. Yeah. And also kudos to her mom, who was just like a good mom throughout this whole movie. She reminds me a lot of the mom from the the Princess Diaries. Oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> not Princess Bride. That's where I paused. I was like, that seems not accurate. Right. But yeah, where she's kind of like hippie. Like I could see like she's a she's a potter. At one mm-hmm. point she talks about having to buy a new kiln and like their house is really nice. I was gonna say that. Like Lindsay looks or Lola looks at the house and she's like, Ugh, grass. And I'm like, that's a really nice house. That would be very expensive. I don't know how your mom is selling enough pots to to buy this house. Mm, I mean, the vibe she was giving off, I feel like maybe that's not the only version of pot she was selling. <laughs> Drugs. I don't follow. <laughs> what is this thing? But yeah, their house is really nice. Her dad's dead, according to her. <laughs> Did you ever... Like, I feel like I told white lies or whatever and stuff in high school. Like, I can't think. Uh, I mean, I guess you don't want to, like, call anybody out. But do they? Do you know anybody that told, like, lies like this that were? Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe not in high school. That would have been sad. But, like... <laughs> Just for them. <laughs> like, <laughs> for, for them. Um, but definitely, like, middle school. I feel like a lot of people were covering things up or, like, wanted to sound cooler than they were. Yeah. But I can't think of anything specific. So, but like it, wasn't that it tracks like the role, like it makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I like the character. One of the guys. Oh, sorry. No, go on. <laughs> Definitely a guy who would always say that his dad was in the FBI and he was a secret agent. You and don't we think that was like, real? No. We were all like, okay, like why? I feel like there's a lot of people, like, because if you work in the FBI or or whatever like different departments you still get a security clearance so maybe like in his like kid brain he's like no he's definitely like a thing so like he right. could have been at the fbi and just like an accountant yeah <laughs> true um that was my example you're welcome i don't yeah i don't really have any that come to look mind. stop everything right now you're at a music audition for pygmalion <laughs> i love that they never said my fair lady they never said it even though that's obviously like it's yeah they showed parts from it later <clears throat> yeah and her name was eliza which like at first i didn't catch what the movie was supposed to be so i thought she was gonna be like eliza like a rest of development lady oh uh, yeah Nelly. i thought it was like i was like this is a very weird reference they're throwing her in there yeah they're but... just they're just doing pygmalion aka my fair lady aka eliza rocks a new yeah. york city cashier girl that that yeah they're doing a modern take on this play what would your your <clears throat> rehearsal song or your audition song be the star spangled banner isn't that <laughs> what you have to do if you don't have one prepared there's like a standard where if you don't have something ready you just if do you like, don't have something ready they're like please leave <laughs> right okay so lola comes to this audition which she knew it was auditions. And she's like, ah, I simply have nothing prepared. How could I? I'm, and I'm like, prepared? I mean, she was prepared. Yeah. She's she saying, me. Oh, go on. No, she's saying the Sid Arthur song, Don't Move On, which is just repeating Don't Move On a few times. And the teacher automatically knew like, oh, how it so goes. Good. But yeah. But also, like, the teacher reworked the My Fair Lady story to be like a New Yorker who learns to be not a New Yorker. So, of course, when Lohan's character shows up, she's like, oh, this is, you're just it. Just be yourself, please, you dramatic right. cool. It was. Then, I thought it was a cool idea. Josh, mm-hmm. who is she up against for the main role? Oh, my God. You guys, she's up against Carla. Who plays Carla? Megan Fox. I didn't know she existed before Transformers. I thought she was just, like, birthed into that robot world. Right? Wait, was this after Transformers? No, before? it was be- before. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, she's here. Um, in in your really, apartment. Wow. Hi, Megan Fox. <laughs> she really just gives the vibes of uh, their feud between Lola and Carla, Megan Fox, Lindsay Lohan. Their feud in this just gives me Mean Girls vibes 100%. Yeah. Also, like, Megan Fox's character was mean, but imagine this, like, you're Big Fish and Small Pond in Newark or wherever this is taking place. Like, Lohan was annoying. Oh, <laughs> And she also much, came in yeah. and she was, like, very condescending and pretentious where she's like, I'm from the big city. I guess you don't even need to audition because, like, I'm going to get it because I'm from the only place in the world that right. matters and your entire life is meaningless and you suck. Right, but also Megan Fox was like, my dad's his lawyer, and that's cute that you lived there, but you're probably a nobody. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I think the older I get, the more I watch these movies. I'm like, no, the protagonist is actually annoying and sucks. Oh, they yes, I'm not saying that she wasn't. She's so in a their drama feud, queen. yeah, and I mean, I guess per title, but like in their feud, I'm Team Megan. But like overall, I like her friend more. What was it, L? Oh, yeah, Ella. She's really nice. And, like, she's a responsible young lady. I think, as a viewer, we are supposed to connect with her more. I don't think so. I think we're just very old. There's a 0% chance that Disney puts out a movie with Lindsay Lohan, and they're like, but she's not the hero. Look, there's whoever wrote the script is a genius, <laughs> and they knew what they were doing. That's why this is such a low rating. People could not look past it. It's sad. That's a weird conspiracy theory, but I'll let you. Thank you. Die on that hill. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay. I have one feedback for Lindsay Lohan in this whole movie. It's to be more dramatic. More dramatic. More dramatic physically. Uh... She was. She was very like, you know how Lindsay is kind of like, uh, like kind of like a little like slumpy uh, she's a little slumpy i don't so she's singing the song don't move on and she's raising her arms but she's not going like oh she's like don't move on i think though like in her head she's being like i think she in her head she's doing it i think so too but i wanted to see like her being natural at it or like her succeeding at being like big I feel and like just, if she were successful at it, then it wouldn't work as well. Because then it would make it look, she'd be like really good instead of like in her head. But that's what like, this was Michelle. supposed to be. No, it wasn't that she was supposed to be like really good. It was like in her head, she's like, right? I don't know. In my know. head, she's like, she's, I just rewatched like the first three episodes of Glee. Okay. Well. She is Leah Michelle. I can't think of her character's name. But. Where she's like, I put videos on the internet and everybody makes fun of me because they don't understand that I'm so much better than all of them. And right. then you like watch the videos and it's like some awkward girl singing in her room. Like, I feel like that's like in her head. She's like, oh, I'm the most blah, blah, blah. And then in reality, she's just like, fine. See, now I don't think this movie is as deep as that. I think she was just supposed to be a big drama queen, like who's big and fun, like out there. And I feel like she she if she just put in a little more effort it would be like that full-on thing i don't know either way <laughs> we're just like critiquing her role in this movie that maybe nobody's <laughs> watched for like 30 i mean that's what we do it's true i mean this these are like the super little things that don't matter at all but i don't know something about it i was like i'm not sure what they're going for maybe that ambiguousness is why this movie is interesting to watch I think the costumes are what made it good to watch and not just like the elaborate like otherworldly ones where she's in a dream sequence, but like, oh, wow, their pants were like as low as possible without just having. And I remember being like a chubby little like 14, 15 year old, like trying to wear like the hip hugger pants and like they just wouldn't work. They just don't work now. And like they barely work on them and just having like bad flashbacks to like, I feel like. It sucks that boy fashion doesn't change that much from decade to decade, but also you're blessed in that you're not like, oh, that was the year where we all just decided. Like, there's no middle ground. It's either like ass all out or like your pants go up to your boobs. Look, guys women. did it for a little short time where it was cool to sag your pants. And that ended quickly. Did you try? 
Excuse me? Um, Did you try to sag? It was not really, but it was cool to like kind of let your pants hang lower. Like yeah. have a looser fit and like they hang And I lower. remember the American Eagle and like what was the other the like Hollister boxers. Like you had to show off like Yes. Like the stupid checkered pattern. Ugh. And the belts with the the like seat belt and the yep. studding and like the black and white and the nautical tattoos, the nautical star. Yeah, Where, but I not in middle school, no. But no, yeah. but like I remember, like freshman year of high school, seeing guys who already had like tattoos. Oh my god! Not like in my class, but like the upperclassmen. Oh okay. And it was like, there's beards and tattoos here. This is a different place. That is different. <clears throat> but Man. yeah, they Lola gets the role of Eliza in Pygmalion. Yep. And, and Megan Fox is like, ah, oh, sweet. I got the role that I wanted. And so mom. Lola's like, ah, oh, dang it. But yeah, she, oh, I hate people who pull that move. Get over yourself. Yeah. Anyway, Eliza, no, Lola thought that she had everything going for her because she got the lead role. But guess what? Sid Arthur is going to break up and it's going to ruin her world. Where were you when the Spice Girls broke up? I'm just thinking of the band breakup that like hit me the hardest. And I uh, remember like exactly what I did afterwards. Wow. And it was make a shrine and cry. Oh. <laughs> well, it was actually Jerry left, like Ginger, and she was like my favorite. So I like literally I had all the Barbie dolls. I like set them in a circle and like put her in the middle. And I was just like listening to their album and crying in my room. Sad. I do you I was just like, do you have any of those where like something broke up and you were just like, ah. Uh. Uh. Was I, it go go on? Uh, mm, no, um, I it was weird. The day when One Direction broke up was weird. <laughs> Going to say that, and I was like, I don't want to like put that on you. I can't. Who who else has like been a band that broke up? And Sync, Backstreet Boys. If we're just talking about boy bands, we don't, Fall Out we Boy don't. for a while, kind of. My well, Chemical Romance. Then. Okay, My Chemical well. Romance. That one was scary. But also right. like. When it happened, I was like, because I knew that Gerard and the other ones, like, they all have, like, side shit going on. And, like, Gerard wanted to be a comic book artist. So I'm like, oh, they just want to, like, focus on other stuff. They kind of, like, accidentally yeah. became a popular band. Right. So it's never been like, oh, God, it's ending. It's like, okay, what's next for them? Yeah. I guess I can't think of any, like, more recently. I don't like, think I bands think, like this are a thing. I mean, anymore. they are. We're just old. But also, I think it's to the point now where it's, like, bands that I really like uh they're like dying <laughs> oh where it's like the beastie boys are on my list of like i want to see them live and then mca died and i was like okay well i guess they never broke up but definitely not touring anymore so we're just old we are but just imagine if your band who you love broke up and then they were like hey we're throwing a final concert and an after party <clears throat> Okay, I, I have something relatable to that actually now that uh my like dream like post high school like my, I was like, I'm gonna save up money for my jobs. And I'm gonna take like a trip just for me, like a vacation to celebrate graduating. And I'm gonna go to New York City Ooh. and I'm going to see a show at CBGBs. That was like yeah. my obsession. Like I went online and like there's way you could like their bathroom like was all graffitied and stuff. You could do like a 360 tour. And I was like, I'm gonna go there and see it in person. And then the lease wouldn't get renewed and it got bought out. And now it's like a Whole Foodsy. Oh. sort of area and it like closed like when i graduated high school like slightly before right but i was like maybe i can get there ahead of time and then i'm like there's zero percent chance my parents are gonna let me uh, a teenager like go to new york city to go to like some shitty punk bar just to see it yeah so i can relate to her on that part where they're like we're never gonna get to do this again yeah oh my gosh i think it makes sense and they're not that far away no uh, they should go and be able to see the last show and maybe not the after party, but like the last concert, of course go Lola. Yeah. You can do it. God. Can you imagine like being in Nebraska? Like if your favorite band ever was like about to break up, like you had like, you could like a stone's throw, like you could actually feasibly go. We had like right? Chicago, but like. That's far. Yeah. Bands would tour and they'd always be like, Hey, we're going to Denver. And you're like, 
cool. Do I drive eight hours to Denver to see my band? Mm. It's always so tempting. And then you're like, but then I have to stay the night there. And also and I have to take off work. And then I have to have sure money. Cars <laughs> working. I make sure Josh is free to drive me. <laughs> if we're being uh-huh. realistic. Um, yeah. Now it's like weird because I feel like in Austin, typically we have stuff like South by and ACL. And so bands don't come by on their tour as much. Yeah. And it's kind of a bummer because it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to like pay to see everybody. I just want to see them. Yeah. So well, sometimes I think there's I'll... enough smaller guys that come that make it worth it. Yeah, it kind of. I just know that there's like a lot of like the weird bands that like where it's like they're popular but not like crazy mainstream that go to like Omaha and like none of my friends in Nebraska care, and I'm like, just go, right? You get this chance. Yes. And it's always like forty people. Yeah. And they're like really intimate. Yeah. <sighs> Omaha's it's like a good place. $25. Yeah. I've had plenty of those. But yeah, they're going to get to see Sid Arthur because they're breaking up. Can we talk about the mall scene now? Yes. They go to the mall and there's a arcade area, I guess, where they play DDR, where there's a whole crowd around them cheering. And Megan Fox is up there like <sighs> taking on opponents at DDR. DDR for me is one of those things where I'm like, oh, this seems fun. But like, you can never, ever, at least in my experience, play DDR without like a couple stragglers like watching. I'm not good at it. And so then like having people watch me, I just get more stressed out. I'm like, bah, 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 and then I just like end mid song. I'm like, I did not think this through. Okay. But the way they're doing DDR, this is what I thought it was. I thought it was like. So they're like moving their arms and like, <sighs> they're both like moving their arms in sync. I'm like, that's not on the video. I know. How would you know how to do this? And in reality, there's four or eight pads and you're just like. <laughs> you're like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and then you miss one. You're like. Uh, you just start like cr- wanting to cry. You're like, I, did, this I fun. paid for this. This was $4. What? And like teen money is a lot thank you it was. and adult money it's a lot still like four dollars for like no no <laughs> anyway uh lola gets up there and faces megan fox and is like yeah the after party i'm going to the after party that's cool you're gonna go too but like i'll be there yeah and then she beats her at ddr i mean yeah <laughs> winner winner i will i worked in a movie theater for a while and there was like an arcade and there was a DDR machine and it just like cycles through music and it made me want to kill myself and everybody involved. And then like everybody picked like the same two songs or just kind of like some days, like the electricity would somehow be out. I don't remember much, but like, I remember like that was just kind of like, or you worked at a a fast food establishment with an ice cream machine, like those noises, like the ice Mm. cream machine just running all the time, just like unrelated to DDR completely. I was just like thinking of like employment sounds sounds that that just like, well, uh, that make you sick yeah asmr your voice <laughs> ouch roasted brandon says we should absolutely drive to denver oh we should now i mean no now we're like way farther never mind. i think it's I mean, like 20 hours i th- well but i think flights are like 20 dollars <gasps> we could right now uh, i think we would what if we got stranded there I have cats to think about. That sounds fine. Oh, yeah. I have no one, so. (laughs) (laughs) You come home and your roommate's just like, oh, I thought you died. (laughs) Oh, me too. (laughs) You're like, give it a couple weeks. Oh. Oh, Uh, no. (laughs) I said it's too early for the jokes. You have to wait till the pandemic is over. Uh... Look. They, <laughs> they actually can't get tickets no not even to the concert not and they don't even know if they're gonna get into this after party but the tickets sold out obviously better that do you ever like now you could be online and hit refresh a bajillion times to try to get tickets when they go on sale for whatever you care about but back in the day you had to go to like your local grocery store and stand in line to use the ticket yes. master machine at like middle of nowhere it was dumb yeah and if it was like a 90 year old, I remember the stress of it being somebody who's like, uh, uh, and like just couldn't really figure out the like Ticketmaster computer thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I swear to God, Dude, if I don't get to go see. to what show? I'm trying to think of like what band. In sync, how do you spell that? <laughs> E-N-C. 
Yeah, I, I'm trying to think now because like I went through that experience a couple of times, and in my head it was like very like I gotta get these tickets. But like in reality, I feel like it was more they're not going to sell out. Nobody else cares. Like I can't think of who I would have been seeing. Right, that it would be that difficult. I think it was literally a simple plan. Like I don't think that sold out. Probably not. It was at Sokol in Omaha. Oh, I fun! Missed that place. Well, they can't get the tickets, but they're like, it's fine. We'll get it. We'll use scalpers. And then they, Lola is like, there's no way my mom is going to let me go to New York by myself. And like, I can't go with my dad to the concert because that sounds dumb. Her dad's (laughs) alive, by the way, spoilers. Uh, But like the part where she's like, you can't let dad drop me. Like if I were 15 and my parents, like mine were fairly overprotective, I suppose, but like, hey, I'm going to go to this like city that's not our home city and go to this concert alone. And they say like, okay, fine, but you'll have to let dad drop you off and pick you up and be like, okay, cool. It you should have been perfectly fine. Right? Like I wasn't cool by any means, but like I feel like that's a, that's just what happens when you're a teen. Yeah. If anything, like I was expecting like, okay, drop me off a block away. Right. That would be fine too. I and mean, even it was a, a busy street. <laughs> an adult brain me is like, take the free ride. Like Ubers are expensive. Like yeah. buses subways can add up come on instead they have ella ask her parents and she goes to her parents she's like hey my favorite band broke up i really want to see their show like i know it's a big deal like i'm so sorry to bother you and her parents are like oh yeah that's fine go we'll be in new york like you can Unexpected. stay at our hotel and she's like what do you mean i didn't even know i could ask and i like related so much with that <laughs> as a kid because it's like you just you just think like no, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. But then people are like, why don't you just ask to go to this if you want to go? Because it's stressful. It is stressful. Even now. Even now. It's like, hey, Josh, you want to go get coffee with me? You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm going to be there. And you could also be there at the same, like, even just like for friends that I see fairly frequently, it's kind of like, I don't want to bother you. And then you add LOL into the text so they know you're not like serious. And Yeah. And then you're like, my dad can pick us up afterwards. (laughs) That might be what you say. Uh, I don't no. Know. <laughs> um, but yes. I just think the concept, I remember, like, I moved out of my parents' house when I was, like, 19 and then, like, left the state and then came back and had to be there, for, like, a couple days before I found an apartment. And in mm. my head, like, at that age, too, I'm just, like, my inclination, or, like, staying the night there for, like, Christmas Eve or something. Yeah. You're, like, can I just, like, come and go as I please? Because in your head, you're, like, oh, I'm going to go out for, I'll be back. <laughs> like <You don't... laughs> 10 minutes going to the grocery store to buy this like, do you, do you, yeah is this okay right like the thought of having to like ask permission to go do something like now i'm free i don't weird need... right except i'm also kind of broke so <laughs> you're also in quarantine ma'am you're not going nowhere about... i'm not it's actually it's nice to see you <laughs> <laughs> okay we're live Oh, yeah. I forgot our characters hate each other. (laughs) (laughs) What? I didn't get that memo. (laughs) Okay. They can't get tickets, but they're still going. And then Lola is like, I have to look like hot when we go to this after party. I have to steal Eliza's dress because there's nothing in my closet that Uh, looks good enough. It gets kind of troubling at this point. Yeah. They steal the dress from the school or she has her friend who's a guy her still future the boyfriend yeah we, we don't have to talk about his character because there's it, nothing to talk about i think it only exists so at the end Lindsay lohan it's very clear that her and the band member are not gonna bone yes i think that's the sole reason his character existed the like high school guy yeah it's like no look it's not weird she's she with has him. a boyfriend yeah yeah um but yeah they try to steal the dress and the teacher's like is she gonna go get drugs from her office i think so (laughs) the teacher was like i can't deal with this right now i i I have to get something in my office i I have to go myself and get something in my office (sighs) it's locked it's locked it's locked and she's like panicked and i'm like is she just gonna go get oxycontin or like (laughs) i don't know i was imagining like some edibles or something she's like i need to go have some brownies please don't ask me further because she was like panicked she was really panicked and then she's like the door is usually locked the door is usually locked it's not locked why is nothing's missing nobody's stolen these shitty high school 
theater costumes. <laughs> no, <laughs> like no. there has to be something else in there. Yes. Um, that was a weird scene. But great, I want more of the teacher. Me, I love a, her. A story yeah. about like the teacher. Uh, so oh Lindsay God. Lohan and her sister's characters die off, and then the mom is she's in despair, and then she meets the theater this director <laughs> at a funeral, oh and then God. it's. <laughs> And then it's the story of, like, the mom and the theater director. It's like a Grace and Frankie, but much more depressing. That sounds really depressing. I'm going to, like, <laughs> I don't know if Disney will give you the rights for that. I mean, they won't let L- L- Lizzie McGuire be maybe gay, so. They won't. <laughs> let Lizzie grow up. Yeah. We'll start a GoFundMe. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't Just know. to, like, pay Hillary Duff? <laughs> they, they're trying to get the rights to Hulu, which would Did be they? cool. They're trying to. I know there's already like a package deal. I got a free trial for uh, Disney Plus today <laughs> to watch this movie. Oh. But like if you get Hulu, it's like, I think Less. it's just as expensive, but I think they try to make it seem like it's. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Lola's Marilyn Monroe. Weird foreshadowing for foreshadowing. Foreshadowing for seems her. like an appropriate, appropriate <laughs> quit. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, so I can't help you. Just saying it's foreshadowing for Lohan's future. Yeah. Which was weird. I remember the scene being used in the commercials. Like, all the fun, cool bits, like, weird, quirky stuff they did in this movie, they definitely used it in the trailers. Like, you thought it was just going to be, like, uh, Lindsay Lohan does a bunch of bits. Yes. Not, like, her at high school. Which is fine. I'm cool with that. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with it, but yeah. Um, they are getting ready to go to this party best in the train. Scene of the whole movie. A. When are you ever going to be on a train all by yourself like that? Never. Were they in a bathroom? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was just a train car. Oh, that should have been more <laughs> obvious to me. There was a mirror and a sink, so I think it was a bathroom. <laughs> in your head, you're like, when are you not alone in the bathroom? Like, are <laughs> <No>. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> when is there not a dark presence behind you in the mirror <laughs> oh god um foreshadowing i love this though because they actually like show them doing their hair which is never done in movies because like i never know how to do anything with my hair yeah. and like and they're like oh you and this one they're like you tease it and then you put in curlers and i've watched james manfield's wig t- styling tutorials i know now that that's how you make it like Ooh. like big hair so okay. you like tease and then they put it in curlers and then they took the curlers out and like yeah did whatever and then at one point that both of their hair was like tangled together it was funny yeah it was so cute and then like there's like she sneezes into her powder and then like Lindsay like draws lipstick all over her face and in my head i'm like makeup is so expensive that sucks so much that you just like sneezed out all of your your setting powder but oh yeah not whatever. enough bronzer for an accurate 2004 representation of makeup but <sighs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> uh, they're getting ready. She does make one mistake, though. She leaves her makeup bag with their money, over, like $100, in the train. So when like they get to the-, the tickets were going to be 160 and they still went in like, room for incidentals, like merch. Oh, shoot. It was yeah. like over $200, I bet. Dang. So they leave it there. They get to the front doors of the venue. They're like, they have a scalper right there and they're like getting smushed against the glass and like, and they like they just can't get in well and then so they're like okay it's fine it's fine we just have to like go in with a big crowd like that is not modern day never yeah i feel like it used to be more of a thing where it was kind of just like okay right then you kind of like show them your ticket now it's like open your purse pat you down but like her friend successfully gets in and then Lindsay doesn't if we're in that situation i'm leaving you i'm sorry i uh, completely agree like, not for like, like a normal you made concert. it you made it go yeah. like enjoy and we would have discussed it ahead of time if we're going to do something like that yeah we get separated like, it's fine yeah like if it's something like a normal show whatever like maybe we don't see it we get rained out we go to taco bell whatever but like for like the last time you can see your favorite band in the whole world like all, every every person go, for themselves right? yeah and her friend um, didn't even consider it in my head i'd be like i'm gonna hmm? <laughs> to be fair, though, her friend is an introvert who was shoved into a crowd of people 
and she, now she's all alone at this big scary thing. I mean, she was I scared. Like it could have been a better experience for her because now she's like, because you know, Lindsay would be like, I want to be in the front. I want to dance a whole lot. Oh yeah. She can be like, I'm just gonna chill in the back. I'm gonna get a diet coke. I'm gonna like, yeah, be comfortable. So. But no, they both end up leaving. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And they can't hear anything really. They can barely hear it. It, so they're like let's just find out where the after party is going to be here's a printed out photo of what the door looks like now let's go walk 67 blocks to find it get that posted on reddit and they will help <sighs> us <laughs> i'll say there's only one, it's not somewhere but like there is um three bands playing at an outdoor venue here in austin that i really wanted to see but i had already seen i wanted to see one i had already seen the, the other two before so i went there like i went to the library and like got my books that I had on hold. And I was like just gonna plan on like hanging out and just listening over the fence line because I was like, I don't need to watch them. I just wanna like I work near here. And then like somebody saw me and was like, Are you listening to the music for free? And I'm like, Yeah, what if I was? And he was like, Do you wanna go inside? And like it was like a security guard who was like ushering, like he let me go see it for free. But at that point, I hadn't expected that to happen. So they had to search through my bag, which had like nine library books in it and like some old tater tots. <laughs> because <laughs> i was planning on like sitting there and like eating them oh my like, god on the other side of the fence but yeah that's my story nice <laughs> glamour is hard tater tots is glamour have you ever gotten into like a, a show like Just for free in general like no, <laughs> has free, anybody no. let you into a <laughs> have you ever show? been able to get into you know like anywhere <laughs> does no. the public let you partake and <laughs> <laughs> i pay and then if I didn't pay, I'm not there. That's usually... There was one time the Mountain Goats were coming here to Austin. And the tickets had all sold out. So I was asking... I posted on like a Reddit. And I was kind of just like, hey, does anybody have like a spare ticket? Like I don't... Like, I can't remember the situation. But like I could... Whatever. And they're like... Somebody got a hold of me and sent me two free tickets and a bunch of like buttons. Oh my buttons. gosh. Cool. So I guess some of us are just cooler. Than- you just have to ask? Or loiter. <laughs> that too. Um, or Lola's dad is alive. <laughs> oh my god! Spoiler. <laughs> Actually, no, we're there. He's following them around creepily in New York City with his dog. Um, and that's it. And then they go to this after party, which I don't know if I would let two that's young girls go to. Not really. A pr- I don't think i would belong there i don't think i would either <laughs> like there's a rock star party i don't think i'm cool i don't know right. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go well lo and behold lola meets Stu wolf her the dude she has a crush on from this band or it gets thinks is amazing a very adult he is super wasted and she calls out on it yeah she's like you're they just go so to a drunk cafe and he's like i want onion rings in the worst accent ever so it's sorry not... i thought it was okay <laughs> oh no he's not a real british i do not think so continue explaining i need to know it, uh-uh. anyway i swear to god fight. if he's from wisconsin i'm sorry he wants onion rings he doesn't get onion rings he throws his, he gets a donut and he throws it at the policeman you just and... called his his accent sorry you call this accent shitty. He's from Australia. It's real. That's, you just think his voice is shitty. He, I thought he was trying to be British. No, I mean, I think he was just trying to be like person with accent. You just think his voice is shitty. It's I okay. do. <laughs> no, he was doing a weird slurred speech thing and it was not cute. Oh, because he was, like, pretending to be drunk. But I guess, like, that's kind of the point, right? So he did good? But it was, like, a weird, not real slurred speech thing. Can you show me what it would sound like to be... I want (laughs) rings. Where's my rings? (laughs) I did not think it would be that easy. Okay. Uh, I was just... I was really nervous that he was going to be from, like, Wisconsin or something. Like, the cook from Passport to Paris. (laughs) I guess it's fine. He's from Australia. Well, but anyway, they get thrown into the police office. Why were they there? I don't know. He threw a donut. I feel like 
an adult saw that these young girls were hanging out with this drunk rock star and intervened, which I don't think is a bad call. Okay, well, they're at a police station, and this is where Ella finds out that Lola lied about her dad being dead. And they have a huge fight, which is fair. Yeah, that would be weird. Like, you're friends with somebody, and you find out there's, like, that big of a fundamental right discrepancy. Like what, what else did you lie about? Because now I have no idea who you are. Like, if, if I found out your real hair color was, like, dark brown. Like, I don't know if- I was, trying to, I was trying to think of something that wasn't too deep. <laughs> if you found out my teeth were fake They're and I not, lied though. about it and I like hold them out right now. <laughs> and there's just like another layer of teeth under your fake Ew. teeth. I really like, no. always wear fake teeth. <laughs> it's like the scarf trick, but with just like fake teeth. Just, like, keep going. Ew. They fight, and then they make up, and then they go to this rock star party and try on his clothes. There's a line where she's like, I can't believe we're in his bedroom. We're wearing his clothes. I'm like... It's weird. This is getting too much, honestly. Yeah, Yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen after this. I knew knew nothing bad was going to happen, but like, Disney Channel is here not letting... Hillary Duff, Lizzie McGuire be gay, but like this is a thing that happened in a Disney movie. Yes. But also, there's so many super chick songs. <laughs> it balances out, huh? <laughs> there's three super chick songs. I counted. Yeah. Also, Hooba Stank. No Hooba Stank. Yeah, the song Perfect. That's Simple Plan. This That's is like the 18th time you have misquoted Simple Plan. What? No. What's, what's the song Perfect. that Hoobastank sings? Uh, the Reason. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I always get those two confused. Sorry. I don't want to talk about it. Um, There's a lot of good songs in this. That's what we're trying to say. It's a really good soundtrack. I would really stream good. it. I wouldn't buy it, but I'd stream it. Oh, I, you wouldn't go out and buy the <laughs> Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen soundtrack, right? Now? On vinyl? Yeah, only if it's a picture disc. Actually, that sounds really fun. I maybe when would. I don't know, like, what mood I would need to be. Because, like, streaming, you're just like, oh, I'll listen to this fun music. Like, putting a vinyl on, I don't know if I'd ever be in the mind space where I'm like, it's Confessions <laughs> Night. Like, this is the choice I'm making. Ooh, you just wait till you do have one of those nights. I'm thinking that I would go for the autobiography by Ashley Simpson. If that that is to... a good we yes, that is very yeah. now. Not the TV show, definitely the music. Yes. Um. And then you can get as drunk as Stu Wolf was getting very drunk, and Lola got very mad at him. I was thinking about it. White Claw's cool right now. Wine coolers were cool in the '90s. What was like the crappy? Not the White Claw's crappy. But, like, what's the middle? Four loco. Oh, yeah, that seems right. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's a whole vibe, huh? <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, that checks out. Stu Wolf was drinking Four loco. Oh, no. Like, it, that's, yeah. that's it. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Lola gets really mad that he's drunk, but this is his after party. Right. And his band is breaking up. And he, they did their show already. Like, let him live. It also seems like it's the case because, like, him and his band ain't gonna fight. So it seems like it's breakup. He goes to rehab. They have reunion tour. Oh yeah. I feel like she's too young to understand that. But like, right. Like that's the trajectory here. They're yeah. like, I feel like they're supposed to be giving off like Oasis vibes. Oh okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, either way they get back to school and carla aka megan fox is like what do you mean i I didn't see you at the party um no you weren't there i can show you photos though and lola breaks down she's like i was there i met him he has my necklace he said he was going to fedex it to my dad which it's a very clear pre cell phone thing because like she didn't have any selfies with him. Yeah. 
And they like hung out all night. I feel like that would be like newsworthy if Sid Arthur's a big enough deal to like whatever. Right. I, but she did see them there and she was yeah. lying that she didn't see them. But the weirdest part of this movie is the entire theater group laughs at her for saying that she went to this party. I feel like maybe it got exposed that she had lied about her dad being dead. Oh, yes. yes. So then they're all just like, oh, this bitch. Like, we can't. Because mm. she, she already, like, just shit on them all. The whole movie, basically. Like, if you're not from New York, you don't even matter. Right. And then here she was lying about something. But it was, a, it's intense. And everyone's laughing at her. And then she's like, I can't do this. And leaves. And, and that's when cheers. she lifts that's when she listens to perfect yeah she's like battle. laying i've been there though she was like in her dark living room like all cozied up listening to perfect like perfect and god there's a good charlotte song that was like the same sort of just like it's weird knowing because it's like a very emotional song but very like forcefully so yeah it's that, like, like a, a teenager i'm in my feelings by like written by like somebody our age now Mm -hmm. like it's weird to think about that but i had like a real like teleported back to like an out-of-body experience of being in that exact position with that exact song yeah but guess what your friend comes over and they say look cheer up you you uh, who cares if they don't believe us we were there and we know what happened and we know how great it was to hang out with that drunk guy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that that twenty like twenty eight year old drunk man and didn't get to see their show and got in trouble for it. You know we know how much fun that was. It was a blast. So you still got to go and you still got to be Eliza Rocks in the play. Yeah, the play also surprise surprise she like convinces her to go, and then she tries to assault Carla with hairspray. Oh my gosh! And but very obviously intentionally sprays it into her teacher's eyes mouth thankfully because like if it were in her eyes i was like well but also she kind of like got her glasses i was like that's gonna be really annoying to clean off she was like i'm so happy to see you with her glasses covered in hairspray yeah but (sighs) yeah so then she does the thing she's in the play she's alive i saw a thread on twitter that was like how many of you wanted to actually see what this play was Mm -hmm. like they just give you short little recaps of like certain scenes and you're just like what's actually happening i'm like i need to know (laughs) well like the sets are really inconsistently like really high-end and really shitty like at one point like there's like well first of all there's no orchestra it's a bunch of kids and the teacher's like children press your space bars and then there's just like a timer program and they (laughs) it's like that's not how any of this works but can you imagine it's like the equivalent of like a dj set but like dj'd by like 30 people having to hit cues exactly on the right point like that's not that's no 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 but like they had to show the apple apple is like hey product placement you get to use our tech for free just make sure 30 apples are seen and they like forgot (gasps) about it until this moment (laughs) like what are we gonna do (laughs) there's 30 right here (laughs) but so then like there's a part there where like the background singers and like actors and stuff are behind this it's supposed to be like a grocery store set and it just says oatmeal yum yum and it's like black with like white paint but then there's like actual grocery carts and like a really cool spinning like counter where it's just like so inconsistently like shitty and not can i just say the entire play was just her yeah like could you imagine being in a school play where you have no lines and you are just a, a backup dancer for the entire thing I can't imagine that better than I could imagine being the person with all of the lines, to be honest. True. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like... really, it was a lot. Yeah. Especially since Carla's character was, like, set up to be, like, just as good. Like, Lindsay wasn't, like, an an amazing, like, shooting star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This... They sing the song, um... Uh changes right yeah like all throughout the thing yep. that's pretty much the whole show yeah it's amazing it's really like good. it's so good if i could just get this song i would i wonder if it's on the soundtrack because i was i always wonder because like there's sometimes 
especially back before you could just Google it easily where you'd buy a soundtrack for something and you're like, I love the music in this movie or a TV show. And then it'd come and it'd be like 12 songs, one of which was like on in the movie, but like a shitty version sang by the cast of the TV show. And you're like, this is not what I asked for. Or like the other end, it's like you get it. And there's like also weird vocal track, like speaking tracks. You're like jamming. And then like, well, and it's annoying because you're like jamming out. And then all of a sudden it's like, Pulp Fiction soundtrack, Samuel L. Jackson talking for like a minute and a half. I'm like, I want the music. Oh my God. What's up with those movie soundtracks? Huh? Not good. Anyway, she was a teenage something, something. Yeah. I've been humming something, this. Something, something. I something, forgot yeah. that song existed and then it Me was too. immediately just like re downloaded into my brain. It is still so weird. The backup dancers are like, wearing the weird they're just like dr seuss characters it's so weird what is it i don't know and then she's like she was a look i don't know what was going on but i still bop it's good i i enjoy the tune (laughs) but this is where the hip hugger jeans are yes that you were talking about because she does this thing where she like holds out her arms and i'm like Ooh, and you get to see I, like ooh. you get to see some like tummy but not like belly button where there's and like this way you like look at your own tummy and you're just like how is there that much space yeah like, <laughs> like what is below the belly button and i'm like what is there it was we- a weird moment yeah not it um, was just a lot of hip bones it was just it was this movie felt like a time capsule now we get to the next scene where it's at carla's house megan fox's house This is where everything blurs the line between Mean Girls and this and this movie. Do you know what my favorite part of this was? What's your favorite part? The casual hot dog buffet. So like Megan Fox, like the scene opens. It (laughs) looks so yummy. It looks delicious, but like it's such a weird movie visual because like Megan Fox is just like, oh, I'll take this. And she has like a hot dog and she puts ketchup on it. And then the doorbell rings. And, and she's, she's like, oh, I better go answer that. And she's just like carrying the hot dog and like eating it as she walks. I'm like, that's not a, <laughs> like, what? first of all, do you just walk around eating hot dogs like that? I don't I know think, if I've ever done that. I think people do. Cause like they're street food. Okay. Yeah. If you had a hot but, dog like, bar, I guess. Not necessarily a hot dog bar. <laughs> what? wait, what was it? <laughs> Yeah, like a cart. You mean? Yeah, hot dog. I thought bar, you meant cart. like a, a hot dog, like turned into like a cliff bar. And I was you like, know. That's the worst. <laughs> no, but I'm a thinking dog... even more so. If you're like a bajillionaire and you're like, oh, I'm going to cater this like cast party, like a rat party for this show. Let's call the hot dog caterers. They're <laughs> like... a bunch of high schoolers, okay? But like. But yeah, they did have a fountain inside of their house. Like so. s- sandwiches or something, like or pizza. It's just when I think of like high school teen party, I don't think like hot dog buffet. I mean, I'm for it. I think it's great. But like, what? <laughs> she was a <laughs> high school teenage hot dog stand. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, that girl was me. <laughs> <laughs> that girl was me. <laughs> No, no. So from below the frame, you just pick up a hot dog and like, get the camera. I, ha- I have a hot dog and I'm probably going to go eat it after this. It sounds really good. Um. Anyway, she answers the tour <laughs> and it's Stu Wolf, the lead guy of the band. And he's uh, like, I'm here to see Lola. And so he's like, yo, you forgot your necklace. And then they have a good talk, I guess. And then there's and dancing. He, he's gone sober over the course of a night. He's had no withdrawal. He's completely fine. Yes. That's, that's fine. A young girl told me that I was a drunk and I didn't like it. I thought they were going to kiss and I was so uncomfy. Yeah, they don't kiss. It builds up to it, though. Like, it seems like it's going to happen. And then it goes to, like, a dream sequence of her dancing with the guy from her school. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, you didn't need to try to trick us into thinking that they were going to be a thing. Because that's just not nice. Just a little, yeah. Don't love it. Because he's at least, at least 21. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So. But at least there was some sort of, like, conclusion. Yeah. Like, this movie doesn't try to be anything more than what it is. It doesn't. No, it's just, it's fun. It's silly. It has a good soundtrack. Yeah. And it's, like, just two friends who, like, are into music and, like, want to go see their band. 
Yeah. Relatable. Relatable. Two friends who met like two days ago. That is pretty like accurate, I think, to like making new friends in high school. We were yeah. like, we're sitting together in this class, so we either have to be friends or choose to sit awkwardly for two months. And I think the that friends... other one sounds fine. Yeah. No, your mom hates me. In the movie. Oh, okay. I was, I was like, yeah. are you <laughs> projecting some? Okay. I'm looking for two truths and a goof. I really <gasps> should have had this prepared Ooh, ahead of time, but it's okay. I'm going to look at the comments of all two people who are watching us. There were, our... there are comments. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe they can guess along with me and help oh, me out. Yeah. I don't think they're actively commenting anymore. That's fine. I Audio listeners pretend. later, we're talking about our Facebook. You're making it weird. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, there's someone here. Okay. If it says one viewer, it's just me. Oh, sad. Because I had the comments up, and also now you do. So it should say two. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's just us. Okay. Oh, this is very bad that this is not going to be edited when i'm oh okay these are actually like good Ooh, okay i'm ready i'm still i don't care if we're on video i can't i can't do this (laughs) okay number one the role of lola was first offered to hillary duff number two alt rock band the dandy warhol shot a scene that was later cut or this is one of Lindsay Lohan's theatrical Disney films inspired by previously released Disney films. Oh, uh, wow. Um, I know who the Dandy Warhols are and they could <laughs> have had an <laughs> I like how you're like flexing. You're like, well, I know that indie band exists. Um, Hillary Duff would never, which means this that could be true. And this is one of Lindsay Lohan's Theatrical release is based on a previous one. Yeah, like Herbie that's... and everything were also. Oh, shoot. I think this was. No. I'm going to say that's the goof. It is. Oh, yeah. I almost, because I was so excited about all these facts, I almost just like read them all <laughs> without. Thinking. What was the other one? Uh, oh, no. What, what do you mean? What's the other one? Oh, uh, never mind. I thought you said you had more. No. Well, I was just like reading through the trivia on this and I'm like, all oh, these are really interesting. So I read the first two and then started just reading the third one as a fact. I'm like, I need to put it alive. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. yeah, Hillary turned it down because of scheduling conflicts. This would not have fit Hillary. I think it might have been better. No. We're very... We I, I, mm, okay. <laughs> You're like I need to go. <laughs> I've learned a lot about you tonight. Would you watch this again? Would you recommend somebody else watch it? I would. I watch this again in another ten years. So you're gonna watch this when you're forty? <laughs> Excuse me. Just imagine some night where you're like on your couch, is like gray haired. You have a, like a goatee. What do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> In the next 10 years. You have a small dog and you're just like, hmm, tonight's the night that I watch Confessions uh, it's, of. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. You're like, I've done my waiting. 10 oh years my. of it. Anyway. <laughs> Would I watch again in a long time? Would I recommend? No. Not because I didn't like it, but because I don't, I think very specific people would have to like this movie. Just me. <laughs> Yeah. We're both here. I just, I would recommend it. I think it's underrated. I feel, I don't know why I'm talking like William Shatner, but I think that movies like Herbie and Freaky Friday and Mean Girls, I think they're really good, but people like watch those get mentioned. I don't see this in the discussion. And I think it should be as far as like Lindsay Lohan movies that we all stand. I think maybe the title being so long. Yes. might have something to do with it not being more popular because it's long. Isn't so, like, there when, something uh, called like Confessions of a something? Shopaholic. It's a book series. I don't okay. know if that's the same, but... There's also a movie or a show that's like Confessions of a American Teenager. Oh, like... Oh, yeah. The Secret and then, Life of the American Teenager. And then 
Lindsay goes out and does confessions of a daughter. Con- uh, oh, oh, the song. Yeah. The, the really sad good one. Yes. Oh, God. Which is just like, uh, oh. She had to have done confessions. that on purpose. I guess. Like, I never brand thought about con- that. Continuity. Well, and she was just like trying to call back, like using the word confessions as like a, a nod to her Disney. Ooh. <laughs> I love how anyway. noisy drinks always are on audio. A metal straw is a great choice for glass. Um, so I think we did it all. Yay. That, I mean, yeah, that was it. And we did it. And we were live. And people talked to us. And I'm going to post it without editing it. <gasps> Naked. Like, Nate, our, yeah. You we're know. both closed. People who can't <laughs> see the video closed. closed. Like, exposed. Like, not exposed, edited. Exposed, exposed, exposed. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. Where can they find us on social media? If they want to confess they their teenage know drama. On Facebook at Pod in This Together. I have it all on the talk, so it's easy. <laughs> People can find us on Twitter at Pod in Together and at Facebook at Pod in Together. <laughs> and you can send an email to us at Pod in This Together at gmail.com. I would Don't really... forget to rate us on iTunes. I would really like it if people emailed us so our inbox for the podcast wasn't just companies telling us about their COVID plans. <laughs> that's like all that in the email. Girl, is. that's my email. I know, inbox. but it's funny when it's like the site we use for our like stats. Like yeah. I'm never going to go to their offices and they're like, we want you to know how we're handling this. We're like, still open. Sh- we still care. Our offices are closed, but you were never invited anyway. <laughs> like... I don't know how to make it stop being life. <laughs> you should figure that out. Or else mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave meeting and leave you alone. I'm going to do that, I think.